I was born on the 15th of January, 1937, at number one Martello Cottages, the home of my grandmother, Kate Jago. I was the second son of Thomas and Florence Jago, grandson of George Jago, and great-grandson of James Jago, a Coast Guard who settled in Sandgate on his retirement. In 1939, we were living at number one Hall's Cottages in Wilberforce Road. Our house was tucked away behind the houses lining Wilberforce Road, the access being through a tunnel under the houses facing Gouger's shop. War was declared on the 3rd of September 1939. We were gathered in the living room listening to the announcement on the wireless set and I was sitting on my father's knee. Even I could tell that this was very serious and we were not allowed to talk. Our wireless set was connected to a long aerial wire which ran out into the garden. When war broke out, my father was working for the corporation as a driver. I can remember him driving a dust cart and later a gully sucker which was used to clear out drains. The house was prepared for war and blackout screens were made up to cover the windows. My parents had decided that rather than be separated, we would all stay together as a family. All non-essential residents and most other children were evacuated. We were allocated an Anderson air raid shelter which was assembled in the garden and partially buried, the excavated earth being piled on top. My father built a chicken run and we had six Rhode Island Reds which supplied us with additional food throughout the war. Even that was controlled and a form had to be filled in each day with the number of eggs produced. My father worked during the day and became an air raid warden by night, spending many hours on standby in their headquarters in the yard behind the post office. The street lights were taken out of use, so nights could be very dark. There were public air raid sirens, of course. One was located at the end of Wilberforce Road. In 1940, the evacuation of troops from Dunkirk took place and thousands passed through Folkestone Harbour onto trains and lorries. My uncle, Bill Evans, was missing and we as a family searched among the troops for news of him. Bill eventually arrived back safely. Uh, the Mather family have long, for a long time were cotton weavers in Lancashire. And when the mills began closing in the Depression, my father got on a bicycle and set out looking for work. He'd worked briefly in a laundry and he spotted this broken down old shed at the end of Wilberforce Road, which did hand laundry only, and bought it. And so bit by bit, over the years before the war, he turned a little hand laundry into a high-class steam laundry, a very beautiful van. And the van had on it something like um, laundry for the discerning few, washed in water soft as rain. And then, of course, came the war when we were all, my mother, my brother and I were evacuated. My father wanted to join up. He was desperate to get in, in and fight. But no, he was in a reserved occupation. He had to do the laundry for the troops. And he was here by himself from 1940, when we all went to 1941, when of course my mother came back and a lot of other people all came drifting back. One of the... Um, great advantages of the laundry was of course it had steam on in the boiler 24 hours seven days a week so we had the air raid siren attached to the boiler chimney and a string ran from the chimney and the whistle for the siren to the front bedroom of laurel villa where the telephone was so at night you could always be there ready with the phone hear the phone go upstairs fly upstairs Flow it, swing yourself across the bed, grab the phone, and they say, Air I'd one alert. And you kind of haul on the street. And then, uh, you know, half an hour later, Air Aid warning green, and you go back, pull this little thing. The Sangate Laundries, Wilberforce Road, Sangate. August the 23rd, 1940. Dear Mary, What a mess that you forgot to take your gas mask out of the car. I do not see your ration book, but before I post your parcel, I will have another look. Your mother tells me that you didn't want to go back when the time came, but by now I suppose you're again settled down. It's been quiet down here until yesterday when a convoy came past going to London. Then the Germans started shelling from the French coast from some of the batteries they've erected 
and the flames from the gun mouths could be distinctly seen as well as the shells dropping in the water. I think the convoy got past all right. Last night we heard some shells come over and burst near Dover, and one of our guns was firing back at the French coast, and we could see the explosion on the other side. There's not been much damage here, really, and not many people have been hit. I'm glad that you enjoyed your holiday, and I hope that before long you will be able to see John. Unfortunately, the end of the war seems to be a long way off, and a lot is likely to happen before then, which makes it very difficult to know what is the best thing to do. Your mother has not decided what to do yet. I would much sooner have her here, but to tell her to come, or even to ask her, considering what it may be like, is more than I want to do. It is better. She should make her own mind up. She can always leave if she finds she cannot stand it. Or it may be that we should all have to leave before very long. Still, things are not as bad as we expected them to be when your mother left, and it may be that we should be quite all right down here. Please give my kind regards to Mr and Mrs Griffith, and love to yourself. Yours, Dad. Because of the doodlebugs flying to London, Grandad had a shelter made of iron erected in his living room. When we heard the drone noises, we all scrambled under and waited until they flew away. One night, the droning stopped and the bomb dropped into the cow fields near Chichester Road. Due to the explosion, a lot of windows were broken. The next morning, we were all trooped out to see the damage. There was a huge crater and metal everywhere. We had to wear those horrible, smelly gas masks while waiting for the bombs to fly over. <laughs>